Okay, so I've got the Sato FA-130T here. I'm going to begin the disassembly. Uh, one of the things I want to show you first, though, before I get started on it, is this engine came to me and it didn't have glow plugs in the front. And the person that sold it to me told me it didn't have anything small enough to reach in there. Well, that's not really uncommon with these Sato uh, twin cylinder engines, because this is my standard nut driver that I use on every engine and if you look here you've obviously got plenty of clearance so you can get in there easy enough here not even close I mean it's it's not even close to getting in there but fortunately Sato does provide this little tool with these older off uh, odd fire engines which is I never really even knew what it was until uh, a few years ago I looked at the instructions and it said glow plug removal tool and I'm like really I didn't know that I thought it was I didn't know what it was because I never used them before and I've never actually had a need until I first saw this engine because every other engine I've had that's been a dual plug I've been able to get my standard drive in there but so this little it's just a little piece of aluminum that is specifically designed to get in there that small close area and loosen up your glow plug and then of course once you've got it loosened up your glow plug can be removed so that's kind of an interesting little tool that Sato provides because obviously they knew when they designed these engines that standard tools weren't going to fit so I thought that was kind of a interesting little tidbit there that I'd share first okay so now to get on with the actual disassembly. What I do when I'm disassembling uh, twin cylinder engines is I always face, I always have the engine facing away from me as if I'm the uh, pilot of the airplane and that way I always consider this the left cylinder, this the right cylinder but I think Sato documentation and maybe others always reference it as if you're in the front of the engine but since I don't disassemble engines with them facing me I always do it this way so I've got my bins here labeled left, common, and center, and right. So I think the first order of business here will be to remove these carbs. Now this engine does have a strange carb layout with this back cover and they're mounted on here and in the Clarence Lee review he shows these carbs still mounted onto this back plate but he did that after the fact because there's no way you can actually remove this car this back cover with these carbs in place so uh, the carbs have to come off first and then this is just a ball link just pop it off that will go in my common bin that carb will go here Now this carb has that baffle attached to it and I want to put it back the same way it came off the engine. I don't think it really makes a big difference unless they've actually got some clearance for it. So here's that little baffle that kind of keeps the airflow regular on both of those. And there's a second carb. Now we can rotate these intake manifolds up and out of the way and take the engine mounts off. See kind of a little bit of grunge down here that needs to be cleaned off. Let's flip it this way. Let's see if we can just take these. These should just pull right off if I can get enough leverage on it. It's got a pretty good seal there. It's not a screw in, it's just held in place with O rings. 
and it looks like it's held in place pretty darn good. Now this one I might actually be able to use this to help me. There we go. Yeah, that's definitely a very unique intake manifold, that's for sure. Actually, I think I see a little bit of damage on this thing. See about pulling that off and removing our rear cover. This, I'm not really sure what this portion is. That's just six screws in this rear cover, or what? Feels like there's some garbage in there. Well, that's just a separate little mounting bracket. Okay, keep those screws in there for now. Now there is a rear gasket or a gasket on this rear cover. Fortunately, I did find one on Horizon Hobby, so I've got that on order as well as the bearings. But I have a feeling maybe I should have left that piece on here because I might actually need that as leverage to pull this cover off. But that's the learning process you go through when you're doing this for the first time. But maybe not. Oh baby, that looks like it really needs some cleaning in there. And if I'm lucky, maybe this gasket will survive because all of this stuff is going to get put into the cleaner. Okay, so that gasket survived. Very nice. You can see there's a lot of carbon build up there, so that'll need to. I don't think there's a whole lot of runtime on this engine, really. I mean, all of this is pretty much just wiping right off. It's loose enough. Maybe it's from the run, from me actually running it and getting this all up to operating temperature. That it's clean now because look, now this engine or this piece doesn't even really look like it needs to be put in the ultrasonic cleaner at all. So that's one less piece I'll probably mess with. But look inside here. That counterweight's got quite a bit of nasty grunge buildup on it, so this is going to be a good thing to get this engine disassembled. So this air pump, I believe now all I need to do is unscrew it. I think it just unscrews. But before I do that, I'm going to have to remove that nipple and that vent line. So I got to find a tool to do that. Looks like this air filter is contacting it. I may end up having to just take that thing off once I get the cam cover off because I'm pretty sure this should unscrew, but it's not really willing to just unscrew right like that. I could just go ahead and take these four cover screws off, but I'm not really sure I want to be doing that at this juncture of the disassembly. 
So, next is removal of these covers.